Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. The stars absolutely align for our OP in the first story. The villains got what they deserved, and the OP received monetary compensation for all the inconveniences, plus a little bonus in the form of keys in the bushes. But we'll tell you about that right after a short pause. So before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, if you're new here, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. My truck can't leave? Neither can yours. I live in a high-rise apartment building and my truck wouldn't fit in the underground parking. It didn't have a lift kit, but it was a 2500 heavy duty with slightly larger tires and did have a headache rack that stuck above the cab a few inches. The apartment had a very limited number of outdoor stalls at the rear of the building, one of which I was assigned. One Saturday afternoon, I was going out with some buds from work. When I exited the building, there was a 53-foot trailer backed up to the building with four guys moving furniture in. The truck was kind of jackknifed in and the trailer was less than a foot from my front bumper. My truck was also backed in with another vehicle behind it. I was trapped. I asked the first guy I saw if they could move the truck he said I had to ask his boss, asked which one that was, and then waited for the described person. After waiting 15 minutes, asked a different guy where the boss was and was told he was upstairs, supervising. Thanks. Went in search of the guy and asked him to move his truck so I could get out. Truth be told, he only needed to straighten out his backup job and I could have snuck by, but he flat out refused and frankly was quite rude about it. Told me tough crap, F off and wait. Went back downstairs to do just that as I was sitting in my truck smoking and listening to tunes, I noticed there was a paddock hanging off the side door of the trailer and there was simply a huge ring of keys stuck in it. I waited until there were none of the movers around and I took the ring of keys, put them inside my jacket, then went and threw them in the bushes some distance away. Then I went back up to my apartment and called my buddies to tell them I wouldn't be joining them. About four hours later, the building manager called me about the keys being missing. The movers were done and wanted to leave. I told them I didn't know what he was talking about. He asked me to meet him in the back lot, which I did. Boss mover was all up in my face saying he knew I took his ring and there were over 75 keys on it and most of them were one of a kind. I just played dumb. Building management suggested we look at the surveillance video. I was a little scared. I didn't realize there were cameras back there, but I played it cool. We all went to the office and watched the footage, but the cockeyed way he parked the trailer blocked most of the camera's field of view. You could see me get out of my truck and walk towards the trailer, but couldn't see me actually touch the keys, then walk back beside my truck, exiting the video near the back of the vehicle. But there was nothing in my hands. The footage proved nothing. Boss man called the cops, but they too watched the footage, asked me if I had the keys, which I didn't, so I said no, and said there was nothing further to be done. I asked if we were done and when I was going to be able to drive my truck. I was told to rent a car and submit my receipts, which I did. The truck moved the next day, but the trailer was left, perhaps out of spite, at the same angle, blocking me in until Wednesday. When I was able to move my truck, I noted the side was scratched up and the driver's mirror was hanging down. We went back to the videotape and clearly saw the boss man walking back and forth beside my truck before taking the mirror in both hands and breaking it off. It was my turn to call the cops. The moving company ended up paying my car rental tab, $375, plus $5,500 worth of bodywork, paint, decals, and a new mirror. I hoped it also cost a bundle to replace all those keys. I lived there for two more years after that and would check on the key ring from time to time. They were still there the day I moved out. And our second story. There's assigned seating for a reason. A few years ago, my husband and I went to see a movie together, and it was at one of those movie theaters that let you pick your seat when you buy the tickets. My husband and I got the last decent seats that were right next to each other, so I was excited. They were off to the side of the stairs, and the row was three seats wide. The third seat in the row was not reserved. When we got to our seats, there's a man with his son that looked like he was around 10 sitting in them. My husband politely asked the man and his son to move since those were our seats, the man got a little belligerent and demanded to see our tickets as proof. And when we showed him our tickets, he just told us to go sit somewhere else. The only seats that were left open at this point were pretty close to the screen, 
and I did not feel like straining my neck to watch a movie. I didn't realize, but his wife and daughter were sitting in the row in front of him, and the wife started mouthing off to us, and she started telling us to stop making such a big deal about it and go sit down somewhere else. She told my husband to stop being an a-hole. I turned around and walked out. They continued to berate us as we left. They sure as heck were PO'd when I came back with the staff member. I told the staff member what happened and how they were being rude to us. The staff member told the man and his son that they would have to move to their assigned seats or leave the theater. The wife started screaming that there was no seats left, that all four of them could sit together. The daughter, who looked around 13 years old, started crying and sobbing loudly, so the woman started saying that we were ruining their daughter's night out. The man and his son left, and the man told my husband that he was an a-hole once again. The daughter started wailing and said she wanted to leave because she couldn't sit with her dad. The woman turned around and started calling me every dirty name in the book, saying I was a total B and that I must hate children and that I was totally ruining her night. I tried telling her the only reason why I made her husband move was because he was being rude, but the lady would not stop lecturing slash insulting me. She continued through the commercials and the previews before the movie started, and she finally shut up two minutes after the movie started. During the movie, the lady kept turning around to glare at me. When the movie ended, I grabbed my husband and we booked it out of there before the lady could resume screaming at me. However, our escape was cut off by a staff member. They asked us if we were the ones with the seating issue and when my husband said yes, the staff member said he had to go get the manager because she wanted to talk to us. I explained to the staff that the lady continued to insult us and swear at us after they kicked the man out of our seats and that I wanted to leave before she saw us again, but they insisted we stay. They apologized for the lady's behavior. The crazy lady came out and saw us and told staff that we were rude to her and she demanded to speak with the manager. The staff asked her to wait near us while the manager was being fetched. The lady glared at me, arms crossed, and told me I was going to be in so much trouble. Her daughter was still crying and I was beginning to feel like I was in the wrong here. I felt bad for the kids, but I sure as sugar didn't want the parents to get away with rude behavior. It pissed me off that they were setting such a poor example for their kids. When the manager came, the crazy lady stormed up to her and started ranting about how me and my husband ruined her family's night and that she wanted compensation for it and for us to be banned from the theater. The manager interrupted her and told her that she needed to speak to us and she asked firmly, told the crazy lady that she needed to wait her turn and she would talk to her when she was finished talking to us. The manager made sure she was talking loud enough for the crazy lady to hear, as she told us how sorry she was that we were treated so poorly by the crazy lady and her husband, and how it was completely unacceptable for them to steal our seats, and then treated us poorly when we asked for them back. The manager then handed us two coupons for a free ticket to a movie, and she told us she sincerely felt terrible about how we were treated. I told the manager it wasn't her fault, and I really appreciated the gesture. The manager then turned around to talk to the crazy lady. The look on her face was priceless. She was so angry and she called me a effing bee once again. The manager started telling the lady she was lucky that I didn't report her for harassment before the movie started because she would have been kicked out with no refund and she wasn't getting a refund whatsoever. The crazy lady shouted back at the manager, but at this point, I didn't want to stick around because I was pretty sure her husband wanted to fight my husband. I also didn't feel like being shouted at by this lady anymore. Wow, an actual manager with balls. Very rare. And our last story. My useless boss lost his job. This happened a few years ago. I was a data and reporting analyst and did all the ad hoc reports for the company. My boss, we'll call her Carrie, was useless. She was one of these people that was always late, left early, and took days off at short notice. The only thing of value she did was all the regular reports, sales, revenue, etc. We suspected she got away with it because she was having an affair with her boss. We'll call him Stuart. Our CEO was a fairly decent bloke. He'd look for ways to cut costs and would pay regular bonuses for the best cost-saving initiatives. Carrie was very keen to submit ideas and encouraged us all to automate our tasks so she could try and take the credit for the savings. On one of her skive days, which coincidentally Stuart was sick, as well the CEO was desperate for the sales report my boss does, I said I'd give it a look and see if I could get it done. 
Normally, she'd spend two to three days doing it each week, but the CEO wanted it that afternoon. A quick inspection of the data showed it would quite easily be automated, so I knocked up the necessary script and got it over to the CEO, who was super impressed that not only had I got it done in a couple of hours, but also that it could be updated whenever he needed it. He asked if I could also look at the revenue, churn, and a couple of other reports. Over that afternoon, I automated everything my boss did. Both Carrie and Stewart were back in the next day, but were immediately summoned to the CEO's office before being suspended and sent home. Turns out the CEO knew they were having an affair and all the times they were sick or late or had to leave early was so they could sneak off and spend time together. He'd not done anything about it because of how important these reports were. Now that they were automated, he was able to get them suspended and later fired for gross misconduct for all the time they'd taken off. I also got a nice bonus out of it. Best part was the CEO recognized your work and gave you a bonus. Saved him a buttload of money for two employees. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.